Are you wondering how to help your students or children solve problems like this? Well, that's exactly what we're going to break down in this episode of Math 345 Support. Hey everyone, my name is Sarah, but a lot of third, fourth, and fifth graders know me as Miss McCarthy. While I create tons of videos for students in these grade levels, I thought it might be a good idea to start creating some videos just for you, for parents, for teachers, for tutors, basically anybody who is looking to help our third, fourth, and fifth graders to make math make sense. So let's go ahead and dive into today's episode. So multiplying and dividing by powers of 10. Whew. I know you're probably looking at these problems like, man, I remember that back in, I thought I did stuff like that in high school or middle school or something, but I don't remember like doing this in fifth grade. Well, now fifth graders have to do it. And guess what? If it can make sense for you and you can teach it in a way that makes sense for them, they are going to rock it. It. That's where I come in. I cannot wait to help you in this episode. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to tackle four problems today. We'll start up here. Okay, so we've got a decimal here and really this whole unit is on place value, believe it or not. We're shifting place value here because all of the powers are powers of 10. So let's take a look at these right there. Okay, we're going to break down some of this vocabulary. So let's take a look right here. I know this is five and this decimal right here stands for and, and then we've got, this is the tenths place and this is the hundredths place. So this would be five and 12 hundredths is the correct way to read this, times 10 to the power of five or 10 to the fifth power. All right, the 10 right here is called the base and the five is called the exponent, just so we're all on the same track with our vocabulary, okay? We're finding the product because we are multiplying. Okay, so really this 10 to the power of five really stands for a one with five zeros on it. So one, two, three, four, five, which is the same as ones, tens, hundreds, comma, 100,000. This means that we're shifting our decimal. That's really all we're doing here. So if we have five and 12 hundredths and we're multiplying by a huge number that's greater than one, that means that we are making it greater. So if, because we're multiplying, we shift our decimal to the right to make the value my day. And this five represents the number of times that you shift that decimal. So watch, here's our decimal right now. We're gonna go one, two, three, four, five jumps because our exponent was five. And in these blank spaces, we put zeros, okay? This was our old decimal, out with the old, in with the new, and I always teach students to rewrite. Don't let them leave it like this. Have them rewrite it just like this, okay? like that. And because this is a whole number, that decimal, because there's nothing behind the decimal right now, we don't have any digits behind the decimal, it's kind of acting like a ninja decimal. It's there, but you can't see it. So just leave it just like that. Okay, so 512,000 would be your answer there. Let's go to the next one. So we have the same number, five and 12 hundredths, and this time we are dividing by 10 to the third power or 10 to the power of three. Either way you can read it. Again, 10 is our base, three is our exponent, right? Three also stands for the number of jumps because we have a base of 10. Because we are dividing here, that means that we're going to shift our decimal to the left to make the value less. Five and 12 hundredths, our decimal is right here, and we're going to shift our decimal to the left three times. Here we go. One, two, three. Out with the old decimal, in with the new. I kind of crept into this territory over here, but that's okay. And we can go ahead and put zeros right there in the spaces. And again, we need to rewrite. One, two, and I usually tell students that if there's nothing right here in the whole number place, the ones place, to put a zero there too. So this would be your answer for that one. Okay, all right, let's take a look over here. Now we have 71 times 10 to the power of two. 10 to the power of two is the same thing as 
a one with 10 as a base, write a number one, then write as many zeros as your exponent. So 10 to the power of two is like 10 times 10, which is the same thing as 100, okay? So two stands for the number of jumps. And since we are multiplying, we are increasing the value. We're going to shift our decimal to the right to make the value my day. 71. But where's the decimal? Remember up at this one, we said we didn't need the decimal there. It kind of acts like a ninja. That means that that decimal can come out at any time and we need it right now. So hiya, there's our decimal. Let's shift it to the right. Two jumps, one, two. And put zeros there, out with the old one, in with the new and rewrite it. Now, because there is nothing Sorry, because <laughs> the lighting went down a little bit. Because there is nothing behind the decimal, we just leave it like that. So it would be 7,100. And finally, let's divide now. So we're dividing by 10 to the fourth power, which would really be 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, or with 10 as a base, write a number one, then write as many zeros as your exponent. That would be the same as 10,000. So we're dividing by a huge number. That means the value is going to be less. So 71, shift our decimal to the left to make the value less. And we've got an exponent of four. So here's our ninja decimal. We need him to come out. So we've got one hop, two hops, three hops, four hops, out with the old, in with the new, don't forget your zeros, and rewrite it, okay? And again, there's nothing there right now in the ones place, so I always tell students to put a number right there, and that would be your answer for that one. If there are any other skills that you're like, oh, I'm feeling kind of shaky on this, could you break this down for me, Sarah? Then please send it my way. You can reach me at, by email at mccarthymathacademy at gmail.com. By the way, all of this is going to be in the links below. So check out the description box for those links. My email is there. You can reach me on Instagram or Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy. Also, if you enjoyed this video, I told you at the beginning of this episode that I'm a math teacher. I create tons of videos for students in grades three four and five. So definitely go to my website, check it out, see if it's something that your students would love. I bet they will because there are students all across the nation who are using it and love watching the videos. It really does help them out. Um, so you can visit my website at McCar oh, sorry, McCarthyMathAcademy.com. Go below, check out all this stuff, find the right product for you, for your students, and give it a try. All right, I will see you all on the next episode.